nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is the 33rd video in our series nerddice.com where we build a tabletop role-playing management application using Ruby on Rails 7. And in this video we're going to uh, kind of follow along on the heels of what we did last time which is improving the documentation for our project. So last video we went in and uh, created a contributing markdown file and in this video we'll be updating and fleshing out our readme file a little bit better. Uh, so similar to what we did before I'm going to go in and use the the markdown editor but before we do there are a couple things that I want to change from the previous video about the um, contributing file that we did here. You can see that when we make internal references, so like here we're, we're referring to main, the main branch version of the unlicensed, which is fine because we've got a main, ver, ver, uh, a main branch version of that. But if we go and do something like uh, burn the contributor covenant with fire, which doesn't yet exist on the main branch, we'll get a not found error. And the issue with that is that I've got, if we look at the highlight of the link, um, it's the, uh, the repo and then blob slash main slash the name of the, um, the file. And what we want to do here um, is change it so that instead, every time we've got this, um, we'll find it, blob slash main here, we can just use relative links to our repo. So, um, and it's relative to the file that you're doing it to. So, uh, unlicensed, we do unlicensed.txt. Uh, um, same thing for our readme. And our same thing for burn the contributor covenant with fire. So now, and that will solve uh, the issue that we had there. So if I go in, I made a couple of other, if we take a look at the, the repo here, um, I'll do the diff. I did a couple of other things where I was just like fixing some language, adding a comma. I had an open parentheses that I didn't close, uh, just doing a couple things for uh, readability purposes. So I've made some changes there. And then uh, the change also where we're going in and using relative links rather than uh, dynamic links. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do a git add. And then we're going to do a git commit amend no edit. And we'll leave the original date on that. Well, yeah, we'll do date equals now. So now do a git status. It'll show that our um, our versions have diverged here. We can just do a git push dash f. And once we do that, we should be able to now refresh on the the code side. This is our contributing file. Now we can see that we've got. It might take a moment. So you can see. We just put in the markdown, burn the contributor cover them with fire. But like when you go and actually deal with those links, um, GitHub on the in the background when it sees a relative link, it's going in now to the the feature branch version of this. So now this link works, and that's what we want there. And we'll test it with the other ones to ensure that it's also going to the um, 
the versions that we want there. That's our branch version of the unlicense and this is our branch version of the readme. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the readme file like we did with the um, contributing file. This one we do have an existing file for. So if I go back to the, um, the readme here and we, we can do the raw version of this. Control A, Control C, and go into our issue. And start writing and previewing our um, new version of this file. So similar to what I did before, I will pause uh, doing uh, iteration of this, and then we'll come back and take a look at it, um, noting any highlights or things that are uh, outside of the uh, the realm of the norm for uh, the GUI markdown editing and stuff like that on uh, GitHub. So I'll pause and we'll do that. So similar to the last video, you have been transported into the future where I have um, written out this, um, this readme file. I kind of went using the, let me make sure that I've got the content here before I lose anything. So this is the original version. I essentially went down the, um, the section here, Ruby version, system dependencies, configuration, database configuration, database initialization i combine those just into database setup uh, how to run the test suite services which really don't apply yet for us uh, in deployment instructions which also don't apply um, i let's see if there's anything else of note here in terms of how i created things so you see the um, the preview here, we have an introduction to the application, um, noting the um, project that linking to the backlog issues list, um, noting the um, educational videos that we're doing like this one uh, with links to it. We've got a link specifically to the device playlist uh, for this. And then um, kind of the application setup and configuration, similar to what we did in the contributing. We've got um, internal links here that go kind of to and from different parts of the um, of the README itself. We have um, a section here on how to set up the application secrets. So that's one particular part where the person needs to know how to do this or the app won't be able to run so we kind of um, added this with kind of the um, the structure that you need that uh, yaml file to be uh, along with kind of some tips for how you might want to solve for this on your local machine the um, database setup right now is pretty simple just rails db create rails db migrate if you need to start over, Rails DB drop, Rails DB create, Rails DB migrate. Uh, test suite, we noted the, uh, the browser test driver environment var variable there um, and noted that the uh, in the system dependencies here that a browser that can run your system tests um, is necessary in order to, to do that. So, um, if you are running the default, you'll need headless Chrome. If not, you could just specify the browser test driver um, to something that's compatible with the uh, the Rails browser test drivers, whatever you've got installed. Uh, Postgres is the real um, kind of thing that you do need to have installed on your system in order for this to run. Uh, we do have some uh, Postgres specific commands like the, um, the engine 
migration for the UUID for users and um, and, and and the like. So that um, winds up uh, needing to be a uh, in install on your system link to our video where you install Postgres link to the video where we install RVM and Ruby uh, in case anybody needs help with that um, running the development server noted that you use bin dev instead of uh, rail server in order to do that because we're using tailwind CSS and then the code along section where we kind of link to the contributing page that we created last video. And then you can see here the conduct section is pretty much the conduct section that we had in the contributing portion, more or less verbatim. So I think what I'm going to do is change the conduct page now to refer to uh, this section in our readme file. So um, kind of these changes for contributing now we want to go in, I'm going to make a reference to the um, specifically readme.md I'm going to do um, the reference to legal there um, and then we also want to now here at the bottom instead of um, the guidelines for etiquette section here we'll just say see the duct section in the readme. Right, so here we'll just change this to be a link to That's pretty slick. Way to go, VS Code. Um, the conduct section. And I think that just replaces that. Um, so let's take a look at our git diff here. So we are the before you start thing is all the same line. So the, the part that's changed here is just the uh, linking to the legal portion of readme.md. And then the guidelines for etiquette, we just change the reference and then all of the changes that we have essentially rewriting the uh, entire readme file. So I think we're good to add and commit this. Before we merge it, I will uh, check and make sure that all of the links work on the, uh, the branch after we push it uh, and then we'll open the pull request and merge the code. So we'll add our code. We'll commit our code, write our message. All right, so I've got my commit message here. We will now push. And we'll take a look at our branch here. Make sure that our readme 
links all work. Version, Let's see if this works. Oh, that did not work. So the Ruby version did not work here. Those are links. So database.yaml works. I might need to do a uh, Yeah, it's a hyphen. I, I did an underscore. That might be the problem here. Secrets. It needs to be a dash. So let's I'm have to force push to the branch now. No, I need to add the file. Force push. Retry this. Go back to our code on that branch. Now, if we go to the Ruby version. It is successful, but if you can see here, I've got a hyphen now in the link, an underscore in the markup. So we've got to fix it again. GitHub Actions are probably, what are you doing to me? Take a look one more time. It's using the hyphen, link works. All right, we'll see what the 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 just builds running in parallel. So while and the, the first one succeeded. So um, while those are running, we will go in and create our pull request. Pause and write out this um, pull request description. 
actually I don't typically do pull request descriptions when it's something along this line we'll say the pull request wait for the checks to complete pause the recording all right all of our checks have successfully completed we will go in and merge from the command line copy this branch name Check out main, git merge. Git push. Git branch delete our merged branch. And then git push origin. Our pull request is merged. Our issues just need to be need to reference that closed pull request, which is number thirty one. Yes, number thirty one. and do them in order. Oh, did I not? sign my last amend. All right, well, I'll... Let me close the issues here. commits here. Yeah, both of those commits were not. Signed. I think I've got the main branch protected. So, oh, well, we will um, Note that as a retrospective item, and we will see you in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft. Welcome to this Stateless Code video. This is video number 30.